Violent incidents, crimes and deaths linked to mental health issues have become all too common in Belize. Over the years, we have reported on a number of these instances, from house fires to murders and bomb threats. Fairly recently, a police officer shot and killed a knife-wielding Belize City resident who suffered from mental illness. There are also reports of mentally ill persons dying in police custody. On February 16, 2023, Barkley Allen, a 26-year-old resident of Orange Walk Town, was accused of burning down his grandmother's home. Allen lives with mental illness. Barkley is like my son and he's been having mental issues, I would say at least the last five years. It could be a little less, but around that. And he would do good for like three, six months. You would see him hustling, doing the construction work, buying his food, taking care of himself. And sudden one, he would just go down again. So this has been a constant battle. And it is sad because his grandmother has been trying. And only two weeks prior, a Balan Street resident informed us that the fire which destroyed his home was started by his son, who is also living with mental illness. This man does some ridiculous thing where, okay. I don't know, the idea that the back there may catch fire first, and I don't know, like he just load, mess with fire, fire. First, I'm over there, so I say, I bar that thing, the car. Man, okay. look, for, he catch a whole bar through back there, so fire. One would argue that information is not readily available to the Belizean public and how an individual should respond in the event someone becomes a threat to others or themselves. Take the case of Nicole Paulina in San Pedro. When she began to display psychotic episodes at home, her family allegedly bound her with chains inside a bedroom. Paulina eventually died from positional asphyxia. When I walk in on the Wednesday, it was just her feet um, chained to the bed with padlock, the bed foot, and then her hands were up, chained up, up, and um, she just made a, you know, scream. She may even hoarse. Her lips may look white. She just may look, <laughs> I don't know if the word that malnourished, like it may just literally look like a movie scene, like a kid, nothing, you know, and you know, they continue to say that you know, she's a threat to herself and others around her. This, this real, this serious, this, this just not right. So I broke down and I cry and they just watch me in the next room and they tell me that I just don't understand. Without proper training on how to handle someone experiencing a mental breakdown, a police officer can quickly resort to violence. A standoff between police officers and a knife-wielding Francis Ramos on the Belize City Swing Bridge ended fatal back in November 2022. Very difficult circumstances, no doubt. Um, I think you can assess from all the, the footage that has been provided so far um, that there was a standoff uh, with several police officers. Um, Mr. Ramos was in fact armed with a, a large knife um, and there were several attempts that were made uh, to kind of calm down Mr. Ramos um, and I think uh, one of the officers even fired three warning shots uh, at the feet of Mr. Ramos. You know, I, I think it certainly brings into sharp focus uh, a very deep issue that we have um, uh, with mental patients, in, especially in Belize City. Um, there is a need. Um, I think we all recognize that there is a need for a facility uh, where we can uh, ha have these individuals go and to receive the necessary treatment um, and attention. Two years prior, in June 2019, Nestor Vasquez Jr. was killed by another mentally ill individual inside a holding cell. His alleged killer, Colin Francis, was detained for attacking his psychiatric nurse, Agostina Eligio. Vasquez, who was at the same time also displaying acute episodes of mental illness, was placed inside the same cell as Eligio. He was mercilessly beaten in that cell. A very large swath of blood. They then bungled serial errors they, did, they moved with no urgency towards the cell where they had been notified that I, I just voices from in the cell, fight, fight, that kind of thing. They responded with complete, in a blasé manner, just lazing into the thing like, wow, where they going? No urgency to save a dying man's life. The police, the officers on duty who have been named, who are on interdiction, 
on the criminal and disciplinary investigation. They failed so thoroughly in their duty of care. They put my brother, who they knew because I had spoken to the duty officer, was having an acute episode that week that he was mentally ill. They put him in a cell with a man who had just displayed a psychotic binge on Nurse Elihia. They put him in there to be killed. And he's dead. Both these incidents underscored the fact that there is a need for greater education and public awareness of mental health issues across the country. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has been providing training for police officers to deal with mental health crises. Last week, 40 officers underwent rigorous training. A mental health um, police manual was done, I think, in 2007. It was revised in 2014, and we have been doing training. It forms a part of the training for the police who are recruited um, in Belmopan. So, so that's a part of that training. But it is, um, I would say, the first time since the pandemic and since we have been trying to strengthen this aspect of um, of the uh, mental health issues in Belize. And um, today we have 40 police officers who are um, undergoing a, a two-day training, not only to discuss um, managing, managing mental health crises, but also we are trying to ensure that we also know how to care for our mental health. There is also a need for critical care and emergency care facilities. Typically in Belize, acute mental illnesses are neither diagnosed nor given critical care. The Western Regional Hospital offers its patients acute psychiatric treatment. The hospital's acute psychiatric unit is one of a few across the country that provide professional help to patients. Anne Link is a psychiatric nurse practitioner inside the unit. She gave us some insight into the services they provide. As a psychiatric nurse practitioner, we have outreach programs that we involve in, which those individuals that are not able to come to the hospital to get help. We try and reach them out in the different areas of the country, including um, Valley of Peace. We have also in different districts, they do the same thing. We don't like to necessarily label psychiatric patients. We have um, individuals that are having difficulty in managing their daily living. So in the case, we just, try and reach out to individuals with mental health disorders rather than um, just patients in general with psychiatric issues. Reporting for News 5, I am Paul Lopez.